So today we're going to try something new and you know me, I like to push the limits. It's kind of how you find out what works and what doesn't work. And we're using a 25 or a 26 horsepower tractor today. It's a Kubota B2650 with a cab on it. Really nice to have that air conditioning in the summertime using a big flail mower. All right. We showed you the flipper, did kind of an overview of it before, but 72 inches wide, a six foot mower on here. It's kind of asking a lot. and. <laughs> you're going to see that today. I mean, it, it cuts it down. It'll accomplish the job, but it's going to strain um, if I'm going too fast or, go, or cutting too short. And you kind of got to watch your speed, watch your cut height, all that kind of thing. And when it gets really thicker material, that's when it starts to bog down more. And you can, I think, probably hear the engine strain, see some little black smoke that comes out when it's straining really hard before I have a chance to kind of slow it down a bit. Um, However, it got the job done. Now the idea here is to show you what you could potentially do in, a, in extreme circumstances with a huge mower on a relatively low horsepower tractor like this guy. If you're reaching out to me and asking me what, what size mower to get on here, I'm gonna say a five foot, not a six foot. This is just too big in my opinion, but you don't know unless you try it and I like to visually show you guys that. You know, and, and uh, Chris brought up the point, we were just having a conversation yesterday, I think about it. You know, somebody will have a small tractor now and then have plans to upgrade to a bigger tractor down the road and maybe just want to kind of try to get by for now with something knowing that it's going to be better suited to the bigger tractor they get down the road. And so this would kind of be an application for that as well. 
you can mow with this one and get it done, but it's, it's really, if you weren't planning on upgrading, it's too big. So this tractor did not have a front end loader on it when I bought it. I just bought this one locally, actually. Um, had a hydraulic plow blade on the front, and we'll put this for sale a little bit later this fall, but uh, a nice setup for snow pushing um, with the plow on there. You could put a rear mount snow blower if you wanted to on it. The cab with air conditioning and heat. The, the air conditioning were great for doing this. Love to be out of the dust, you know, out of the allergies, all that kind of stuff. Any bees or hornets or wasps or anything else that are out there. A lot of great reasons to get a cab um, if you can afford it, but it's going to tack on to the price quite a bit. So if you're going for the long term and your budget can handle it, man, it's it's hard not to, to get a cab. I absolutely love a cab just for, I just got done mowing for whatever it was, half hour, 45 minutes. I don't have any dust on me. I'm not sweating. <laughs> it's hard to beat that. So a few specs on this tractor, just for those of you that are in the market for it. Uh, 233 hours. I don't know what year it is. Probably a late teens, I would think. 2017 to 2018, somewhere in there. Uh, again, does have the cab. It's still got the loader joystick in here and does have the hydraulic plow on the front. It's actually a New Holland plow. So there's a, a regular, looks like Kubota mount, but then whoever had this tractor must have found a New Holland plow and put that on there. Still angles left and right, up and down and all that kind of thing. Uh, the hood is not in the most beautiful condition. We'll probably try to buff it out and see what we can do, but there are some scratches on the hood. I don't think it's worth replacing. It's not, it's not mangled, it's just scratched up, and that's kind of what Kubota hoods, a lot of them do, unless you're really careful with them. Uh, I did know it actually has rim guard in the rear tires, which is kind of unusual, considering it doesn't have a loader on there, but the stickers are on here too. So uh, the rear tires are loaded, which is nice. It's gonna help it feel more stable, and when you're plowing snow in the wintertime, it's gonna give you a head start on extra traction. I would still put a bunch of weight on the three-point hitch just to add on to that and get all the push and power that you can, but that's a really nice touch. All right, so what we're mowing is actually a section of a failed corn food plot, and I had a cedar that I bought off of Amazon last year, I, and I was intending to try to use that to plant corn. Well, that cedar basically fell apart after one year of use, and so I needed to get the seed in the ground. I was like, well, I have about an acre, rough, roughly, of ground to plant. I've got two acres worth of corn in the bag that I bought. So I'm just gonna double the rate and broadcast it out there. And then I actually did a light disc. I lightly disked it in. You gotta get corn about two inches deep. And this is the results. This is what you're looking at. So if you are ever curious about broadcasting corn, that's what you're dealing with. Didn't look great for me. I left kind of the hill, a hill area of corn and then a couple other areas of corn too because just the different angles and the hills on the property, lines of sight, it was coming up high enough where it still serves a purpose as a screen. So I wanted to leave those areas there and then the area that I mow is where I'm gonna plant. Just got a new Genesis seed drill um, that uh, one of my distributors, is they repped that line and so I was able to get one of those and so, so we can sell those Genesis seed drills to you if you're in the market. They are a pricey bugger, they are well, any seed drill, a no-till drill is gonna be expensive and these are no exception. Uh, I'm excited though to get that planting here. We're gonna put some winter rye down uh, in that area. I'm gonna spray it off here in a few days and then put some winter rye in the ground. I expect good results, but I wanna get some practice with that seed drill, playing around with the settings because we're gonna be planting switchgrass in the spring with it. Uh, some wildflowers, we'll be doing our our uh, food plot planning and everything else next year and years beyond with that too. So, so I'm looking forward to putting that to work and seeing how it does. So folks, if you're in the market for an attachment for your tractor, whether it's for the three-point hitch or the front end loader, we'd love to help you out. We ship attachments nationwide every day of the week. Head on over to goodworkstractors.com to see what we have to offer. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.